This is The World of Wine, your weekly update on news from the world of wine in Paris. I love Paris. Today's program of World of Wine is about Hollywood and wine. The American Association of Wine Economists has just released a new white paper. The subject is how wine is featured in movies and television, more precisely, Hollywood movies and U.S. television. The paper is authored by Bordeaux-based wine expert and author Raphael Schirmer, who is based at the University of Bordeaux, Montaigne, in Pessac, France. His factual and witty 20-page report on the presence of wine in major Hollywood movies and U.S. TV shows doesn't fail to entertain, nor to inform. Some conclusions he draws are, quote, The United States, and through them, their movie industry, are attempting to promote a new approach to wine consumption, one that is more accessible and less elitist. This coincides with the emergence of the United States within the past five decades as the world's number one worldwide consumers of wine, with a consumption of 30 million hectoliters per year. Just in the 1960s, the U.S. ranked sixth in the world as wine consumers. Much of this increase en masse of wine consumption in the U.S. can be credited to the popular appeal as it is displayed, or mirrored, in entertainment. Beginning with Marilyn Monroe's glamorous image, often holding a flute of bubbly. Of course, American enthusiasm for French wines dates at least as far back as the days of Benjamin Franklin, who, as a Paris-based onophile in the late 18th century, was reputed to have been gifted a bottle of Bordeaux wine by none other than Marie Antoinette, the Queen of France. And even more famously is Thomas Jefferson's love affair with French wines and his importation of some French vine grafts to the U.S. where he planted his own vineyards. Vineyards he maintained when he later became the President of the United States. But back to Hollywood. Movies, American society, and wine. It can be seen as a triptych, states Shermer in his AAWE white paper released in June. He points out that only a few movies actually deal directly with the subject of wine, notably Sideways, Bottle Shock, and Somme, which is short for sommelier. More commonly, wine sets the stage or is simply present in a restaurant, a social setting, or nightclub scene. Julie and Julia, and even Ratatouille, for example, do deal specifically with the subject of wine, but Shermer points out that both these films are about fine food already whereas films like The Great Gatsby, Breakfast at Tiffany's, M.A.S.H., and Easy Rider all feature wine as it relates to a particular moment in American cultural life. Shermer poses a very interesting question in his paper, which is, could movies be so tightly correlated to consumption practices? He then answers his own question by stating that this is what can be foreseen as dessert wines are hardly ever featured anymore, while white wines gain in importance over time. He concludes that wine consumption, as featured in American movies, is a reflection of history, and consumption is indeed spreading. Let's take a look now at some more famous and beloved Hollywood movies that feature wine. Alfred Hitchcock's Notorious, Casablanca, Giant, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, This Earth is Mine, Some Like It Hot, Woody Allen's Manhattan, Annie Hall, and Midnight in Paris, The Killing of a Chinese Bookie, Scarface, Godfather, the French Connection, Big Night, In the Air, Intolerable Cruelty, Spanglish, Social Network, Friends with Kids, Forgetting Sarah Marshall, No Reservations, Bridget Jones, Jackie Brown, 
Disclosure, Bewitched, Sex and the City, and of course, the 007 James Bond series and the Oceans films. Once again, the two narrative as a posted documentary films that deal directly with the subject of wine are Bottle Shock and Sideways. Bottle Shock is one of the only films ever made that actually touches on the subject of the revolutionary event, The Judgment of Paris, which put California wines on an equal par with French wines. Shermer postulates that, quote, wine can even play the role of a catalyst in film narratives, up to becoming practically a forerunner of the actor's performance." End quote. A scene from Sideways. A conversation between the two protagonists, Miles and Jack. Jack. I thought you hated Chardonnay. Miles. No, no, no. I like all varietals. I just don't generally like the way they manipulate Chardonnay in California. Too much oak and secondary malolactic fermentation. Miles then later explains to Jack about Santa Barbara Pinot Noirs. You see, the reason that this region is so good for Pinot is that the cold air off the Pacific flows in at night, and it just cools down the berries. Pinot is a very thin-skinned grape. It doesn't like constant heat or humidity. Very delicate. I can't help but keep wondering how that scene could be rewritten for Burgundy or even Alsace. But the all-time best movie scene about wine features, of course, George Clooney and his cinematic leading lady, Catherine Zeta-Jones, in a scene from Intolerable Cruelty. Clooney, red. Catherine, French. Clooney, Bordeaux. Catherine, Chateau Margaux, Clooney, 57, Catherine, 59, Clooney, 54, Catherine, mm, Mr. Massey. The scene that follows, notes Shermer, is not shown, so unfortunately, the bottle cannot be seen. That's all for the World of Wine this week. I'm Paige Donner. Join us again next week on WRP for the World of Wine.